Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for keeping it e circuit. And I want to sample some of the comments that you've sent in on our Facebook page. Um, Karo Mpenda Mam Anasema, hi guys, I'm Carolina. My brother is infected with epilepsy. And for that, you can check out the interview that we just had and you can get more information on where you can you can help him deal with epilepsy. And then Owen Gray, locked outer Marish. Um, Kunapia Sweetheart Vero, a locked in. Kiplagat Japan, it's a long name. So Anasema from Esiro Village, Kibasaga, Ward, Nandi County. Okay, watching live Kamakawa. Shabiki Wanipate Kwa, Ampeana Nambayake, so you can find him there. And Isaac Spice Pinol, watching and locked in. Thank you so much, guys. So in studio with me, I have one of the renowned reggae and dancehall artist with me and we will get to know much more about him his music what he has in store what he has in store for us and much more about him shamir welcome welcome thank you thank you so much yeah thank you also for coming in yeah, yeah. so thank um you. our topic of discussion today was um would you put it online that you're single and you're searching um i, th I think it sort of depend, depends on somebody's personality. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people who like um, letting their business out there. Mm -hmm. And there are people who like being private. Yeah. So it just depends on your, on, on your personality. You know? So I'm asking you right now. For me, <laughs> for me I wouldn't... Like, I wouldn't put my, my relationship status out there. Uh -huh. um, Simply because you know uh, people perceive different situations um, differently. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people who might sort of take advantage of. Um, how take advantage? How? <laughs> well, or crazy is it out that here. you're just an artist? You don't want to put out who it's you're dating, what you're doing, if you have a family or not. It, it has a lot. To, it has a lot to do with. That. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, um, for for a creative person, mm -hmm. uh, peace of mind is important. Yeah. Because you never know things might happen, you know. And then it puts you in a bad mm -hmm. place and destroying your brand in the process, you mm -hmm. know. Or build your brand in the process. So yeah. Yanni, mm -hmm. you're never really sure Hold what could happen. Like yeah. You're never really sure what could happen mm -hmm. if you decide to have too much of your personal mm -hmm. um, business out there. So for you as an as a, as a celebrity, what you have to say, Evil, you don't put your life out there. Your personal life. I, basically, I choose. Yeah. I choose. I choose. So what, what is it that you put out there for people to see? Uh, mostly, a lot of the work that I'm doing personally, mm -hmm. um, both as an artist mm -hmm. and as someone who likes um, uh, supporting good things. Yeah. You know. So I, I choose, mm -hmm. I choose, I choose very, very carefully. Mm -hmm. yeah. So currently, what are you supporting that is one of those good things that you're supporting? Um, basically, uh, there's an organization I'm working with mm -hmm. in Kisumu. I've been working with them for uh, four, four, four and a half years mm -hmm. now. What's the name of the organization? One Vibe Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an art-based organization um, that supports education and music yeah. for very, very talented um, mm -hmm. young kids. And um, I've been working with them as a teacher, as a music producer. Mm -hmm. And also I managed the program for a few years. Yeah. Uh, up to 2016, that is, from 2013 to 2016. And I'm still connected. I'm still mm -hmm. connected with the project. So that's one good thing that I like, I like and love putting out there. Yeah. And also, um, um, I have a studio um, that I'm collaborating with a very good friend of mine from Portsmouth, UK. Mm -hmm. um, so the project is called Pinch and Sham. Yeah. Uh, where we'll be recording very, very talented artists at um, no charge at all. It's not going to be... No charge. Yeah. It's gonna Why? It's going to be a <laughs> studio that doesn't charge. Like, because um, growing up as an artist... Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of um, challenges, you yeah. know, coming up as a, as a as an artist, you know, and one of my biggest challenges was mainly like finding like a safe spot to sort of record and 
express myself as an artist. Mm -hmm. And it was so difficult or expensive at the same time. And, you know, producers giving you ATT, you mm -hmm. know, for an artist, yeah. for a good artist who understands how their music is supposed to be put out there, there's a way you want your sound to be, you know? And in most cases, most producers can't. They can't get that. They can't get that. Mm -hmm. Unless it's someone they're really, really um, into working with, mm -hmm. you know? There's also that discrimination when, like, for example, there are so many big studios in Nairobi, but their best music is by the artists who are signed or directly associated with that studio. Yeah. If you come in looking for the same service, mm -hmm. it becomes a very, very, it becomes a very, very difficult process. Mm -hmm. You know, your song ends up sounding like, you know, <laughs> not really good. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I felt. I felt the need to um, come up with something or come up with a project that can make it easy for a lot of very, very talented individuals to access, yeah. you know? And that's how we came up with, the, with, 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 that, with that project, mm -hmm. yeah. So how do, you make, how do you make the money that you invested back if you're charging this thing as zero? Well, um, I... I work. Mm -hmm. I work, and also I'm. I'm also. I'm also a businessman. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of business do you do? Well, I'd say I do. I'm. I'm into. Um, how do you call it? I'm into export and import mm. um, business, mostly electronics and all. Um, so that's what I've been doing for a, l a long, long time. And also, I do songwriting for a couple of labels in in Europe mm -hmm. and oh, in, in Jamaica. Okay. So that's because th there is one time I saw that in one of the blogs that um, s the writer of this article had said that you are one of those artists who does not force that Jamaican accent. No, I I, <laughs> I don't force. I don't force. I try. I try to be. I try to be as real as I can be. You know. Yeah. Because sometimes the easiest way to get through to people is speaking a language that they all understand. You mm -hmm. know. And I try to stick to, you know, plain English and Swahili if if, if I really, really not need in it. No, not really, not really. But there's a couple of songs where I throw in a few Patwa words because Patwa is very, very sensitive. Yeah. Like if you meet a Jamaican mm -hmm. um, and then you're trying to speak in Patwa mm -hmm. and it's not the right Patwa, Normally they get upset. He'll he, they'll get offended. They get offended, you know. They get offended. This is the same with like, um, like every language. It's also it's it's always good for an artist to understand. You know, it's good to understand something before you get yourself into it because you might upset people in the process. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you still did not answer my question. Yeah. How are you planning to make the returns back for? This studio. Well, I'm I'm looking at the, um, the label. I'm, I'm looking at royalties. Eh? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at royalties. I'm looking at um, CD sales. Mm -hmm. We're looking at uh, shows because there's quite a number of uh, avenues yeah. that we have. Currently, we're working with uh, um, with someone called um, Rockers, mm -hmm. Rockers Media, and basically they do a lot of distribution for a lot of artists in Kenya, like every single distribution site known uh, on the planet. Mm -hmm. They have access to that. And um, there's, of course, a lot of opportunities in um, like the hotel industry, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of opportunities for venues and events, like from the label side of what we're trying to do. We have a lot of that, um, a lot of those connections happening. So all all that's needed now is just content, you know? Yeah. Because once you have that content, then it's easy. Yeah. It's easy to create it. these opportunities mm -hmm. for uh, these artists without having to wait for uh, wait for shows, you know, and appearances and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into your music. At one point, there's a time you were calling yourself Singer X. Yeah. <laughs> why Singer X and why did you change to Shamir? Well, um, I remember... Let me tell you the why. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when we were going to the studio, when I was going to record my first single, 
which was on fire mm-hmm. and yeah. it became a hit mm. um so we were headed to the studio i was in form 3 and we were headed to the studio and we we're trying to think what's his stage name going to be you know and i remember getting into the studio and then one of my friends um my godfather called kamau said ah, you, you see you're a singer <laughs> but now because you're different <laughs> let's give you that x <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's how the singer x came about mm-hmm. and why i changed to shamir was i i broke out of a contract yeah with my with the management that was managing me back then mm-hmm. um you said you're in form 3 yes when you recorded fire you were in form 3 yes yes i was Ooh, in form okay. 3 i was in form 3 and um when i broke off my contract um my manager decided to be a bit petty mm-hmm. and give my stage name to another artist wow that's so another level of petty by the yeah, way yeah it was it was a bit <laughs> it was a bit complicated back then so i just decided to go with my third name shamir mm-hmm. and that's how it's been since mm-hmm. then okay yeah. so what are you currently working on well um currently pushing singles eh mm-hmm. um pushing singles um recording a lot of rhythms um so i have a single out it's called vendetta mm-hmm. um i featured one of my very very good artists uh, she's called bev mm-hmm. and um we did uh, we released the video around 2 weeks ago so now we are pushing singles one by one one by one so maybe sometime later in the year I'll put out the album after compiling all those singles and then um do something and see mm-hmm. and see how it goes. After you did fire there was word that you had you were supposed to get ama you were getting a, re- a a recording deal in Jamaica. How did that go? Well, I I I I worked with the uh, I worked with Tony Rebel mm-hmm. for uh, for quite some time. Tony Rebel and there's a sound called Supersonic Sound in Germany that I was working with. And uh we had a project going on. They had signed me up. Now because of um basically I had a difficult management. And so I had a lot of opportunities going because back then um Fire was doing really well and I got into a lot of charts. Um basically a lot of worldwide charts. Yeah. Like in Japan, in 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 London, in the US. The song was doing well and I missed a lot of uh mm. concerts because my manager my management was undercutting me back then. Mm-hmm. So they were trying to push my opportunities to other artists who were behind me in the label. And I've been I've been trying to be careful uh, about the kind of team yeah. that I pick and that's something I tell a lot of artists, you know. Try and be very very careful with the kind of uh, team that you put behind mm-hmm. you you know because no this is happening to you the second this time this is happening to me you know and um but it was a different it, it was an interesting experience that taught me to be a hands on person mm-hmm. you know and that's mainly why i'm trying to create an opportunity for very very talented individuals you know so that they won't need to go through some of this challenges you know yeah yeah because that's how people end up frustrated they get into drinking and mm-hmm. doing some crazy stuff you know you know and spoiling your talent at the end of the day you know yeah yeah so are you under any management right now um currently i have a manager mm-hmm. she's called penny penny mungai yeah um she works with a label called double splash uh, in belgium but they also build in based in based in nairobi uh so that's currently my team mm-hmm. um she's uh she's also my best friend you know mm-hmm. and um yeah that's what At i'm least working with this one now you're safe <laughs> yeah i'm safe i'm safe <laughs> unlike I'm safe. the other two yeah uh-huh. i'm safe mm-hmm. so in your opinion who are the biggest who are the biggest re- i mean reggae stroke reggae stroke um dancehall artist in kenya well uh, i've always told waire mm-hmm. that he is he's a he's a he's, he's one of the greatest you know 
he's one of the greatest and it's only it's only a matter of time before um he goes fully fully international mm -hmm. you know he's one of the those artists but he's been there for quite a while now he should be already like no normally like the, the way i know it like in the international market mm -hmm. it gets it gets a bit complicated you know it gets a bit complicated it takes time mm -hmm. T 10 15 to 20 years Ooh, before okay. before you can actually get into some of those markets you yeah. know but it also takes a good song and a good team mm -hmm. you know so i'd say i'd, I'd say why any other um well, I have an artist mm -hmm. that I strongly, strongly believe that she'll go far. Mm -hmm. You know, she's called uh, Kathy Matete. Mm -hmm. You need to mark that name. Ah, okay. Uh, she's called Kathy Matete. We're marking it. Uh, she's w one of the best um, vocalists that I've mm -hmm. had the opportunity to uh, to record and collaborate with. And soon enough, you'll hear some of our work and. Yeah. Where is your name on this list? <laughs> <laughs> Where is your name? Well, I, I, I try not to beat my own drum. Uh, <laughs> no, once a while it's okay. It's not bad. <laughs> I well, mean, I, when I you're getting, uh, when you're close to getting deals in Jamaica, then that means you're good enough. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a practical person. I, mm -hmm. I choose to, I choose to let people um, decide yeah. wh whether my Which work is a good is, thing. Whether my work is good enough mm -hmm. or. It's not. Mm. You know. So where can people find you on your social media, YouTube? Well, um, Shamir, Shamir himself, mm -hmm. uh, Shamir himself everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. It's still Shamir Ta Tadeya. That's T A D E I Y A. Shamir Tadeya, and um, YouTube the same same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what if an artist wants to come and record with you? Where can they get you, well especially for this deal that you're offering? Well, they can they can uh, they can uh, DM me, mm. uh, Shamir himself on Instagram. I'm mostly on Instagram. Uh, they can DM me on Shamir himself, or mm. they can DM Double Splash Entertainment mm -hmm. on Facebook. That's Double Splash. It's one. It's one word. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there you have it, guys. That was Shamir. So don't you go anywhere. Morris will be back with more.